The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Basil Chapman here on this first trading day of 2022, Monday, uh, January the 3rd. And we're looking at the Dow. Uh, let's see, where did the Dow go? The Dow just disappeared. Yep, it's down eight now. Uh, it's been all over the show, actually. INDU. There we go. The Dow is uh, down nine at 36,328. I suspect some way, some, somehow, there's a good chance that we, we test the 36,679 high of Thursday, Friday, we closed, yeah, on Thursday. And if that's the case, then I suspect we're going to make that PD. But if you look at and the Dow at this point is now down 17. It's kind of struggling earlier. The futures last night, that was a bit of a surprise, were quite strong. And then they got even stronger. And then this morning they were very strong. Then all of a sudden they started to pull back very sharply. And uh, I suspect that's kind of, the modus operandi now is to have quick. Uh, we can have this is a, this is what I call dartfish day, but it could be dartfish week. Meaning, in fact, I don't even know if there is such a thing as a dartfish, uh, but it's a real quick moves to the, and and then a sudden stop, a quick move and a sudden stop, a quick reversal of trend, and then just constantly. That's what I think we've got here, and most importantly, I think we are real close to some kind of a digestive phase. That's what I say to subscribers. So many stocks in the Chapman Wave methodology, we're always looking for a buy signal to go to a buy mode, and that implies that it should go to at least a PD. What happens is if it goes to a D and then a very quick E, that usually imparts some kind of a um, little bit of a toppy motion and says, just be careful, you could get some kind of a pullback. Well, well look what we did in the S&P. Made a high of the 4806, I think it was level. Um, let me just say, was it five or six? Uh, 4807.02 on the 28th, pulls back for one day, gives you a peak D, and then pops the next day to 4808.93 and um, has a kind of a weak session on Friday and today is an up or down session so far we're back up again up three and I suspect that this is going to be the clue I'll make it as simple as possible if the S&P spikes to 4814 and can hold there and then touches 4822 this week I would consider that is really good action if instead it fails to break 4808.93 or at least close above that, uh, then we've got to look at this as a potential for some kind of a choppiness with a, with a, a digestive phase occurring. And that would say that the Dow maybe, I, I don't know, it's very rare that the Dow doesn't get to a leg D. But look, the DIA actually has gone to the same thing, a leg C, but the YM, which is the futures, and I don't use the futures for anything other than to tell me what's happening <laughs> in between hours, the market hours, did go to that leg D. So every once in a while over the years, we've had where the diamonds or the futures or the Dow go to a peak C, and then well, just one of them goes to either a double top peak C1, C2 in the Chapman methodology, or it squeaks to a D, and then we get a pullback. I've even missed a big turnaround because the Dow um, didn't, uh, didn't confirm Ds altogether, and I was waiting, and it pulled back sharper than I anticipated. So I anticipate that th there's enough residual strength to at least get close to the 36,000, uh, the high that was made right here, 36,572 uh, on the 30th. And then we go in the, that, that's the, the, sorry, that was the futures. Let me go to the Dow itself. I wonder why it wasn't printed up there. 36,679.44 was the all-time high three sessions ago. 
I'm anticipating that we get somewhere close that at worst we go peak C1, C2, or we go to D, and then I have to make some kind of a decision. Do we change from the long side, which the last buy we've had uh, back in the 35,100 level? Uh, do we hold on to that? Are we already taking little bits off? We will take a little bit off if it goes one penny above 36,679.44 in our Dow Diamond position. Uh, I'm watching this closely, okay? And all I can say is that there are enough enough signs to say there's residual strength, and there are enough signs, if you look at a Microsoft, which had been a leader for so long, going to the all-time high of 349.67 on the 22nd of November, peak F in the Chapman Wave methodology, and then these arch formations, lowercase h becomes a lowercase m, uh, and we're watching this very closely, sharply down today, down five dollars at three thirty-one. I'm watching the individual stocks are going to be very important. Okay, question I just had. I'm going to do that right now. CCJ in the den. Uh, TB wants to know. Yeah, CCJ is acting quite nicely off its most recent low at the 200 period moving average. This is uh, Chemico Core. Now, of course, I haven't typed in what it is. I'm always thinking it is. Copper, but actually, ah, CCJ. Well, CCJ trading right now at 22.03, up a dollar 22. This is much better action. The technicals are starting to improve. I have to tell you, until it closes for two sessions out of three, about 24.10, I have to consider that I just have to keep this in mind as a, a very nice bounce of a low and a gap up. That's a good sign. But, um, let me just see. Anybody going to tell me? I'll just find it out myself. See, uh, Kamiko, Kamiko Core. There we go. C A M E C O C O R does what? I always put that in. And it tells me that it is one of the largest global providers of fuel needed to energize a clean air world. Well, that's so much for the copper, huh? See, and there you go. Um, Largest provider of fuel, hmm. uranium. Ah, that's it, uranium. The Cameco Corporation. Uh, Cameco is one of the largest providers, uranium. I forgot that it was uranium. I'm pleased to see that it's uranium. Let's see what the URA is doing. Also a nice move off the bottom, but it hasn't done uh, enough for me to say that's a big trend change. So Global X Uranium, yes, I do like it. All I'm going to say is, uh, all I'm going to say is CCJ is acting well. If you're in it, that's very good. If you're looking to get in it, it's a little tough other than to say start a small position at 23. And even here, I would the, the low today is 22.53. I don't know if I want to, may I 2%, 3%. Yeah, you could start a position with just a small a, a stop at 23.52, one penny below today's low. If it goes under that, probably it's going to get stuck in a rectangle formation. But that's a way to start your position. The MACDs improves. The stochastic's not good at 60%. On bounce volume's horrible. And the relative strength has improved, but not great. And the nine hasn't yet crossed positive. So I would just treat it, in fact, I'm going to say, as a very small nibbling position. And you can add to it if it starts to show strength. I would not add to it right now. I just start a position at 2305. I'd have, as I say, a fairly tight, what is it, 55 cents stop, something like that. Um, I'll be back in a moment. So the Dow is up 79. I, I still think there's a residual strength. I'm anticipating some kind of a leg D. We'll see. Oh, my, look at that. The SMB's up 14. Very good. Bells are trapping. Tiger Technicians Hour. I'll be back. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today 
and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TESS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TESS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. We're back. I had a question uh, over the weekend about uh, the Chapman Wave Inside Track Repellent Zone. If I could show a couple of examples. Look, we've got Nike. Nike makes a high, an all-time high of 179.10. Uh, back in early November, and then it starts to make a cup formation, come pulls back sharply to the 168-ish area, bounces to 177, a lower high, and look at the technicals, how weak they are, and then it starts to make lower lows and lower highs. It has a big pop to the upside. In fact, an island reversal gap to the upside, and where does it stall? It stalls in this, uh, first of all, it's the falling axe formation. Let me just show you that. Uh, one of the Chapman Wave techniques. Here we go. Where the price rallies sharply, very often goes to a D, E, F, or even a G in this particular instance. And then it starts to come down and make lower highs and much lower lows. And it looks like a, an axe. Look, he has the handle, he has the blade, the expanding blade. And then all of a sudden, it forms a base. And that base says, hey, I'm starting to rally. I'm going to try to break that trend line at the top, that right, that lower, that higher declining trend line. And then what happens is it either stalls completely or it breaks out and it does a one-to-one -to, -one to the upside. Well, in this case, it stalled right at that level of that trend line. And then the trend line, what I love to do is I draw uh, – like a mini channel, like just a narrow tube. And it says if it breaks and closes above, if it's on the way, if, if it has to break upside to break out, if it does that, that's going to be a big positive because that resistance line then becomes a support line. But if it keeps stalling, it says just be careful. This is the repellent zone. Just treat it as a propellant or repellent zone. That's, it's as simple as that. Now what we're looking at is Nike which is the uh, Nike B shares, sport and sportswear, is starting to stall. It's got a peak D in the weekly chart. I should really have put in a, a down arrow because it's taken time, but I'm going to give it just a, I'm going to be generous here. Everything about it says, as long as the 9 period moving average is holding above the 14 in the weekly chart, you don't have to put a down arrow in. It is in some kind of a, a sell signal. 
but let's not get too carried away. And then back at the ranch, what we're looking at is the monthly chart also has a D. So it has G in the daily, peak D in the d weekly, and a peak D in the monthly. And that says, ho, ho, got to be careful that these other things can happen. Watch Nike. And Nike, of course, I, I, there are a couple of people that use it not so much as a benchmark for the Dow, but it's kind of an indicator to say, you know, it's one of the really great stocks in the Dow. If it's holding well, then the Dow should hold well. If it's starting to pull back, maybe the Dow's going to pull back. If it breaks out, maybe that's going to help the market. But I'm treating it more as just another indicator that you can use to say it's hinting that there's something else going on. And this is in the apparel area. This is purely, if you look at um, discretionary income, this fits both the discretionary and for some people it's absolutely imperative that they wear, but I'm putting it more in the discretionary area and I'm saying we're going to see with the holidays concluded what happens in, to the retail area. And here we go again. Retail is RTH. It also has a Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone, the falling axe formation. It went above it. This becomes really important support. It's down $1.36. The Van Eck retail, which has 20% Amazon. But if you look at the XRT, which is the one I really like to use, because that is, in fact, the S&P retail ETF equal weighted. Amazon doesn't have, doesn't distort it. It has a different uh, chart formation altogether. It's in legs C in the daily chart, but it is really the weekly chart says, hey, you had the rectangle formation. You broke above it, then you went in it. Now you're coming back to check in to everybody in that 92 area. And uh, basically, the, uh, RT, uh, the s and retail ETF says, you know what, for now, you might be having a tough time. That is just as simple as that. Now, I need to do a couple of things I haven't quite finished. I want you to show the XLK. XLK. XLK is the S&P Selects Tech Spider Fund, leg D in the monthly, leg G slash C in the weekly. It has just enough room, maybe not this week, maybe next week, just to pop to another high to go to your D. doesn't have to. could fail at a G, but I'm looking at this as a potential. Uh, and it's a peak D in the, in the um, daily chart. And that just is basically saying um, the – Tech area has still been on a, on an absolute tear. It's making higher highs and higher lows, even though the whippiness on a percentage basis is getting quite high. And this says right here we've got a little mini falling axe formation. Right here, a little mini click up. Right, one, two, and if there's a break above the 177.30 level, uh, it could test the all-time high, which was no, 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 wait a minute, one. 77.04. Sorry, if there's a, 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 a break above 176.35, that says, hey, now you can go for the last high that was made uh, back on the 28th of December of 177.04. Uh, let me just a couple of things that I want to look at here is yes. So now let me show you something else. The Dow is coming back nicely, and that really shows you internal support on the first day of the month, first day of the year. First day of the week, first day of the day. What we're looking at is the the Dow is not giving up, and this would be the time. Remember, 1990 was it 1990 when the Nike, uh, the Nikkei Dow went to an all-time high, 39,000 or something like that. I remember I did the hand charting and I got my P D or E, whatever it was, and then that was it. Uh, now I don't know if we're going to do the same thing here. You remember January the 16th was 2000 was the all-time high at that point, and then it was three months later that the uh, semi semis and the uh, S&P made their highs, uh, and then we had a little bit of a pullback from that dot-com bubble. Let's go to Mark in Fort Collins. Mark, how are you? Good, Hello. how are you? Yes, I'm good. How are you doing? Good. <clears throat> hey, um, it looks to me like the IWM has broken a falling axe. It's breaking yes, a it point has. with potential volume. It's making a peak B or a leg, a leg B in the daily. Is that a potential one-to-one -one up? 
So we've already had the one-to-one up. If I'm being very strict in the Chamway Falling Axe, folks, this is where you get all the resistance levels from the 244.46, November the 8th high, all-time high, and it comes down. It couldn't break out, and then finally it broke out right there on the 22nd of December. Now, when you get a very successful one-to-one breakout in the Chamway Falling Axe formation, it says, be prepared you can then get a one to two and even a one to three. And in this particular case, it's on its way. It's trying to go uh, one for two. And let me just do this so I can do, we're talking about the same thing. So we go from the low that was made there to that high. We've done it in the same uh, degree, angle, and number of bars. That's good. Let me make this nice and thick so we're all looking at the same thing. Let me make this blue. And let me make it uh, blue with a... transparency of 70%, so it doesn't overwhelm. Now, that's a little too much. Let's make it 60%, 60%. There you go. Okay, so what we've got here is I'm going one-to-one. Click, new parallel, and that'll be pink. And there it is. Pink is right there, and I'm going to be very strict and take it from the actual trend line itself. That's usually a bit aggressive, and that takes me to 226.98. And right now we're at 226.47. Aha, we've got something going here, Mark. I'll be back in a moment. If you've got a moment, I've got a moment. Let's talk about it. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den trading room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. So we're on with Mark, and we're looking at the IWM, the Russell 2000. These are the small caps. And, yes, they're actually acting very well 
the nine period moving average with four days now, <coughs> excuse me, is uh, above the um, above the uh, nine is above the 14. The uh, MACD is good. The stochastics at 84 percent. The on balance volume is very weak. It's a little bit of a concern. But you know what? Um, sometimes on balance volume lags. Uh, sometimes if you're looking at a buy signal that can go to um, a buy mode that actually takes you all the way to a D, sometimes you have to wait for the on balance volume to play catch up and then it finally gets overbought and then that gives you your turnaround. So I, I have to tell you, I like this. I like what's going on right now. I'm a little concerned only in that this rectangle formation not often does it go, and let me just expand this a little bit so we're looking at the right thing here. There we go. Not often does it go so long sideways, then break to the upside without breaking to the downside and then coming back in. That's number one. Number two, it isn't that often that I've seen the rectangle formation spike to the upside, then come back into the bottom part of the rectangle and then make a V-shaped recovery. So I would just treat this as a step-by-step -step motion and say at 226.46, I, I love the action. Let me just see the 120-minute chart. Uh, is that, that's now A, B, I can give, either way, I have to call it a B. Yep, that's a B as well in the 120-minute chart. So, Mark, you were going to be looking at it as a potential positive, correct? Yeah, I actually bought the TNA, which is the triple at 75.70. Uh, oh, so, so it's doing well, um, <clears throat> but I'm trying to figure out a target price. And I was looking like if we break, if we break the leg A with volume today, that potentially in my mind and Tom's system is a one to one up, which could take it pretty high. But I didn't know if you think that's possible or not. <clears throat> so, so uh, are you, at the moment, are you looking at the, when you say, are you talking about the TNA or? But I mean, I know the one is related to the other, but were you talking about the TNA? Because what's really important, the TNA, which is three to one long, the uh, this is the DX small cap uh, bull, uh, three times shares. Um, if it goes into the ninety point fifty area, that starts to to trade inside this big gap down. Yep. That'll be very important because if it starts to close, I'd say probably two out of three sessions, if it's able to close above the low that was made of 93.30, which is the low of that particular gap, if it's able to get into the 90, oops, was that 93? Yeah, into the 93, if it's able to trade in the 93.50s, you've now filled in the gap. And my, my rule of thumb is, um, and thumb right now is not doing all that well. But the rule of thumb is that any stock that you're looking at that is able to fill a gap and then start to trade away from that gap to the, in this case, it read to the upside uh, for a certain amount of time. And in this case, I'm saying to you maybe two out of three sessions is starting to show that that gap, all the influences that were negative on the way down are now being switched to positive. So that would be a really good indication. And that, that would say, going back to the IWM, let me just give you the same numbers because some people are looking at that. The IWM, in fact, has is a little different because it's two, it's two to six point seven five. And so far today we're at two to six point six nine, the high of the day. We're like within six or eight ticks away from starting to fill the gap. So I, I do like this, and I like it because in the whole rotation that we've looked at, we've looked at how every single sector has had its turn at bat, and then all of a sudden they're sitting on the bench, they're just watching while the other players come on. And that could be the case in this, and that would be also part of the tradition that we see. I, you know, I'm, It's not every, every year, but every once in a while we see the tradition of at some point the small caps start to lead as we go into the end of December, beginning of January, and can actually stay that way for a chunk of January. In this case, uh, all you can say is that it was very late in December, but they did get going. So this is a good sign. 
and, and most importantly, you've got a rectangle formation, like almost, uh, I could do this, I don't want to do it just yet, I, I'm not ready for it because it's a daily chart, to put that semicircle in and say, hey, wait a minute, we've even got a ch chance of a one-to-one -to, -one to the upside. We're not there yet, but that is the potential. So it could, even if it stalls tomorrow um, and goes back into the 225, 224 range, if at any point, uh, I wouldn't say in this week, I'm going to go all the way to next week. I want to give it as many. I'd like to give it seven trading sessions at least. If it's able to, to trade in the two, this is the IWM, if it's able to actually trade close to 228, that'll be a big deal. And it'll actually be a big deal uh, if it's with the general market stalling. But it'll be a big positive if everything actually starts to go together to the upside. So I do like it. And you're in a very good position. I'm not going to tell you how to handle the trade. You know that. But I congratulate you on your entry. And all I can say is that what, what would be the absolute best outcome is that the on-balance volume by Friday is sharply higher because that would say, ha, huh, now we've got the volume. Remember, volume and the on-balance volume gets added on an up day to the total number, to the, to, the, to the running total. And that's really what you want to see. I hope that helps you. Yeah, that helps me a lot. And when you get a chance, um, take a look at uh, quadruple U, UUUU, and UEC. Those are flying today. More uranium stocks. Oh, that's with Cameco. Okay, very good. Okay. Thank you very much. So, right. folks, this is two that we've got. A UUU trading up 83 cents, up 10, almost 11% at 846. Uh, we had spoken about this the other day. I said it's kind of in the range. What you really want to see is to break out to the upside and then start to hold the upside because uh, that would make change the rectangle to a cup formation. And that's kind of what we're doing. Uh, UUU is Energy Fuels Inc. Nice action. Very nice action. And what was the? Oh, I missed the other one. Uh-oh. Did Mark mention a, a, another one? I'm not sure. Uh, let's see, what, what are we looking at, GMO? Uh, uh, oh, TMO, yep, TMO. Uh, let's see what that's doing. Yeah, TMO is having a sharp down day today, 23. Made an all-time high on Friday with a D, 666.65 was the high on the 26th of November. Pulled back very sharply under 610. Then it ran up and went to 672.34. On Friday, and I said to subscribers, watch this cup formation. It's the second D. It should be pulling back. Yeah, we're going to watch it closely. We are long from 484. Did I say take a look? Oh, I can't remember right offhand what I said. Uh, give me a second. Nope, nope, not there. There. Uh, what did I say? Uh, Monday. TMO. Yeah, all time high, leg D. So yeah, this is at 6.43. I think this is what we're looking at here. The best of the best are also taking little dives to the downside then they try to come back. It's starting to show the choppiness of profit taking. And all I can say is Thermo Fisher, uh, Thermo Fisher is still a fantastic stock. It's, it's been in the sweet spot. I suspect over the next couple of weeks there's gonna be some kind of pressure and we'll see if it holds the 5.30 level. It's at, five, at 6.42 right now been a fantastic stop for us. I'll be back. TRT, I'll be back with Jimmy at TRT. TRT. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today.
technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks, we're back. So I had a question about TRT. TRT is, uh, I haven't even looked to see what TRT is yet. It doesn't matter. Let me just finish this. Peak A, big B, mm -mm, right there. And a leg C for uh, December. We don't uh, know what January has in store. Triptech International. Oh, Triptech, huh? Trip. Trip. Tech International. All right. Uh, and they're trading at 12.70, down 73 cents. So this is made of peak C1, C2 in the chamber methodology. It actually is holding very, very nicely. The MACD is good, but I'm a little upset that the stochastics only has 76%. And that just says there's some internal weakness here that needs to be resolved. I, I don't see it uh, pulling back. Uh, it's at 1270 uh, more than the uh, 1110 area just in the short term if it does take that out that's a pattern we've seen before where it makes the cup formation then it pulls back deeper and then it starts a fabulous run to new recovery highs so the question really is a trt analysis yeah let me just say if you've been long for a while i would not do anything other than right at this particular moment because of market conditions I would just say, you know what, if you want to take just a little bit off, just, you know, you can even plan that you're going to put it back and name the number that you're going to put it back in. That's the way I would do it because the MACD and the weekly chart is strong. The stochastic in the, and, and MACD and the monthly chart has improved tremendously. I, I like what I'm seeing here. I just think there's this digestive phase, and I'm not sure yet whether it has a quick pop to a D into the 14 level. 13.49 uh, was the high today, which may be 13.80, touch 14, and then pull back again. Um, and that's really the issue. At this point, if you say to me right now, would I buy, would I sell, or would I hold? I'd say hold, number one. Number two is if you aren't in it, what would you do? Ooh, I just, this is a difficult one because I think even if it pops up, it's going to come back into the into the 12s. So I would just hold off. I try to, I, I, let's look at it together. If we can get a pullback to the 12.30 area, let's look to see how it's going to hold the 11.40 support. Um, and right at this moment, you've got the cup formation and it has, you, often it has double, a double U pattern and it retests. So characteristic is characteristic. And all I can say is that on a day like this, 
uh, down 5.5%. I think it could pull back just a little bit more. But overall, I like it because it's making higher highs and higher lows. Um, it's just now a little tricky to get in fresh. And let me just look at this on a long-term basis here. Uh, oh, yeah. Look at this. This is a stock. I had a feeling that this is a stock that had, had a history. Um, uh, Trip Tech International. I should know what they do. Once upon a time, back in July of 2007, just before the big market crash, it was trading in the 2436 area. When it was all over, uh, it was down in February of 2009 in the dollar, dollar ten, dollar five area. So it's got a history there, um, and it keeps making these big U-shaped patterns. It's in the middle of a U-shaped pattern. I shouldn't say it's at the middle. I should say it's more towards the end of a stretchy U-shaped pattern right now. But all the technicals are a lot better than it has been before. So I'm just going to say at this point, I think it's still bullish. But you've got to be a little careful right in the very short term as to an entry point. Because after all, 1270 down to, say, 1210 or even 1190, that's a big percentage. But not a big deal if you're looking at a stock that has the potential to go to the 14s and 15s over the next uh, six weeks or so. All right. But I, and, and I think it has the potential right now. We'll have to look at it again in a couple of days. Do I see the caller? Yes, I have a caller. Earl in Seminole, uh, how are you? I'm doing great. Looking forward to a great year. Me too. Well, let's put it this way. Um, as far as the whole environment is concerned, as far as as far as the whole COVID situation is concerned, I, I'm hoping that this is that, you know, I like to talk about internal lows and residual low, and sometimes you can come back to the residual low, but all the damage has been done. This is just the emotional low. I'm hoping we're getting to the point now where we're getting to the emotional low where the noise is is just terrible. But the, the actual facts, when you finally look at it in, in six weeks' time, wasn't as bad as we thought. Let's hope we get yeah, it. I the agree end. with you. I agree with you, yeah. Okay, well, let's let's see. Uh, it, it doesn't know us, so maybe what we're saying doesn't really count, but I hope that we, we are looking at something that says flurries are one thing. Let's see what happens in mid-February, uh, beginning of March. Hopefully we are done with this thing. I'm done with it. But not my family. Yeah. Everybody's had something. All right. So you're looking at IEF, which is uh, the iShares 10-year Treasury Bond ETF. So your question right. is. Uh, you sorry, what? Yeah. So this is IEF? Yes. Okay. And this is the iShares 7 to 10-year Treasury Bond ETF? Yes. Okay, and it has a very similar pattern in many ways to the TLT. And they, they don't have to be correlated, but in this case, they're pretty well correlated. Um, all right, you've got a question I can tell. My question is, this is an, an inflation play, and it looks to me like it's priced right, right here. So... Is there a way of actually trading this particular vehicle, or would you use uh, something else? What would you use as well, a trader? I'd use options. I'd use options and go out. And you would be looking at it. It's at 114. What would, what, what's kind of your target that you'd be looking for? Well, I, I, I just think it's trading at a, at a very low premium. I mean, the, the, the inflation... The government is play inflation is seven percent. The actual percentage is uh, the actual inflation is double that, and this this is trading you know at a deep discount if if you consider the inflation figures. So you'd be looking at it maybe breaking out over the hundred sixteen area. Oh, absolutely, uh, okay. absolutely, and even higher. So here's my question to you. Have you considered going along the TBT then? The, the which one? TBT, which is Ultra Short uh, Lehman 20-Year T-Bond ETF. Yeah, I have. I, I've looked at the tips, the TLT, 
And I like this for where it's positioned price wise. Okay. So I, I think I think it I I think it's at the bottom. If you look at it, it it's almost at a at a triple bottom when you pull so, it back. You know, I I've my when I look at inflation, I look at inflation two ways. I look at inflation that is forced upon us. And then I like, oops, we've got a break coming up. And then I look at inflation as um, choice. In other words, I've never seen so many Teslas ever around where I live. I just see them all over the show. And that's choice to overpay for a car. You don't have to get that kind of, you have to pay that price. Let's talk about it when we get back. Well, I'll be right back, folks. We're up at 84 in the Dow. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So we're on with Earl, but just a couple of things so that I don't run out of time. Yeah, DNN, a uh, question in the den or a statement in the den. That's Denison Mines also in the uranium. Starting to act well at 151. It needs to get to the 165 area to say, hey, I've broken out of uh, the resistance level. Uh, Apple Apple is trading uh, a lot better. Remember, I was expecting that uh, Apple will be the one that has really good earnings going into the end of uh, for the holiday season. And NVIDIA, I think, is kind of stuck here. And that's the one we'll be following closely stuck. Now we're going to go back to Earl IEF. And so Earl, what I wanted to say is voluntarily overpaying, which is what a lot of people tend to do for certain things that they want, 
is it's I find that inflation over the decades, inflation really impacts people when it's the stuff that they have no choice um, to pay up for starts to go uh, exponentially higher. That's number one. Number two is there is still quite a bit of cash that's been saved up because of the um, people staying home. I think that's starting to change a little bit. So I, I suspect that we are going to see yields start to inch higher. Hopefully it's just inch higher. I don't want to see them do it by yards. And I think you're right. I, I'm going, I want to do a little bit more work. Let's, I'm going to come back to this as the first thing tomorrow. Um, when I look at the, I, I want to do the IAF. I, I like what I'm seeing. I need a little bit more technical stuff. I'm going to do deal with it again tomorrow. Okay. I'll be here. Okay. So we, we we've got bonds and yields and all sorts of things we'll do tomorrow. I'm going to hand you over in a moment to uh, to Larry Pizzavento. Everybody, I think is back today. We've got Larry. We've got Think or Swim. We've got. Uh, Steve Rhodes, Dave White, and then Tom O'Brien. Uh, my service is the opening call, and I'm going to just say I'm signing off, but I do the news, and then i got to wrap it up. But most importantly, what we're watching this, this week, will and how does the Dow make a leg deep to the upside with an all-time high if it can? I think it will. And then are we going to start to see a digestive phase? And that's the big question for me. I'll be back uh, in a moment for the news. Otherwise, see you tomorrow, same time, same station.